Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just wanted to put out a short little description video, and hopefully this helps some of you with regards to the solar system on the Grand Design campers. Now, there's probably lots of other YouTube videos out there as well, but I see a lot of the same questions on the Facebook uh, Grand Design forums, whether it's the Owner's Forum or the 2400, 2800 Bunkhouse Campers group, which I'm also part of. So my camper is a 2022 2800 bunkhouse. It has the 12 volt fridge and it also has the Furion battery monitor system and a solar panel. So in your booklet, hopefully when you purchased your camper, you should have the Furion charge controller manual, the battery system monitor little booklet, and the solar panel itself. So the solar panel itself, I just have the 165 watt single panel. This just tells you how to take care of it, clean it, install it, those things. What's interesting is in this booklet at the top, you'll see you have the panel, the controller, and the battery and an optional fuse or disconnect. Now what's interesting about that is the same, same thing shows up in your charge controller manual. In the center, you'll see if you have one or two panels for a 25 amp controller or a 50 amp controller having two panels or four panels. My camper only has the 25 amp controller and I have one panel but it also indicates here as an optional fuse breaker or disconnect. So when you're sitting here right now, I'm working outside, you see I have the battery disconnect is off. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then I also have my batteries on the front of my tongue and I have a disconnect right there. So what does this disconnect do? Well, this disconnect right now shuts off the lights inside that are 12 volt, the radio. Um, it also shuts off the little display panel that you see at the top of the steps that shows you your tanks and their settings and the battery on that. So this really doesn't shut down the whole system. What this does is pull select things offline that commonly would drain your battery, but it does leave on um, your tongue jack because that's not necessary in the camper you can still use that that's directly connected to your battery also your propane uh, alarm which is a safety feature so in order to shut those items off most people install a 12 volt switch like a marine boat switch on their battery box and that goes in between the lines and permanently disconnects one side of the battery so that you're not feeding anything so that can be great for when you're in storage or uh, ready for winter and you're, you know, you're in a climate where you don't have to pull your batteries. So right now, that switch is on. My batteries are connected to the system. My solar panel can charge the system because there's always voltage coming from the panel down to the charge controller whenever there's enough daylight out for it to produce a charge that's where that optional disconnect comes in. If I needed to go and do something on the 12 volt system right now up front and I did not have that battery disconnect, when I would take off the leads, those leads could be hot and they could be getting voltage from the solar panel. My dealership told me, you know, when you take them off, cover them in tape. And I was trying to figure out why and then they told me because the panel's always putting out power. So in the booklets, there is the disconnect. So what I did is up here, I, from the controller, I just came back with the incoming line and I put a brake disconnect on the solar panel. So right now it is a flip switch, but it's also a rated breaker. And you can see other people have done that as well. So on my Furion controller, I'll bring you in close in a second, I have 13.21 volts and it's not showing an increase or a decrease right now because my battery is full. 
If I go to amp hours, I can see that it's only putting in 0 0.056 amp hours or nothing at all because it's again full. If I press that again, I see that I have 225 amp hours of capacity because I'm at 100% charge. I can also go to my percent and I can see that it reads 100%. So let's show that up close. So there, the percent is at 100%. My amp being used or adding from my panel right now is pretty negligible. I'm at 225 amp hours and I'm at 13.2 volts. Now, I just disconnected the solar by flipping that disconnect that I added right there to the off position. You can see there's nothing going in. Everything stays the same because I'm at a full charge, but I'm slowly, you know, the battery's gonna come down to a resting state. That might settle out over the next few minutes, maybe to 13 volts or 13.1 volts. Okay. So if you use a multimeter, if you would use a multimeter across the lines set on the voltage, you would find that there was nothing coming across there or at my battery that there was nothing happening. But the, the idea though is you have to set that up for your battery. Most, most campers will come with a group 24 or a group 27, you know, regular marine grade battery, 12 volt, just installed at the dealership when it arrived or when you're about to pick it up because many of them out there on the lot don't even have the batteries installed. Um, so they install it when, you know, at the time of purchase. Most dealerships will install it, go through, check all the lights, make sure all that stuff works, but they might not necessarily calibrate the controller, or I mean the uh, battery monitor system. So what you wanna do is find this little booklet, and you can also look this up online. Furion's website has it, you can download it. It talks about how to mount things, how to check things, um, where the inline fuse is, and then on the back, it gives the specifications, but then specifically set up an operation. And it talks about setting up each battery has a capacity rating measured in amp hours. For accurate use, the meter needs to be calibrated and set up for your battery capacity. So I have two six volt deep cycle golf cart batteries on the front of mine in series. So I get 12 volts and they're 225 amp hour total capa uh, operating capacity. So when I went through, discharged the battery bank, set the batteries, you know, and it goes through step by step. There is seven steps, very simple to configure this back and forth and get your battery monitor to read correctly. And this is important so that if you come around the corner and you open up your bay, that if you have it set to percentage, and you see it saying 100%, well, that's 100% compared to what it's looking for. And if your battery was not set up for this battery monitor, you know, you might only be at a real 75% charge or 50% charge because whatever that battery was when it was put in, it's gonna probably default to some rec setting and it's not gonna accurately measure that capacity. So take a few minutes, go through the manual, and um, there's, again, there's videos on this out there already on YouTube, so I'm not going to replicate what somebody's already done to show you step by step what is in there, but you can go through, look at that, and hopefully that'll help solve some of the questions that I see. Now the last part is, you know, always monitoring, watching your batteries is good, I've been here now for two weeks after our five week trip, disconnected with the solar still on, and it's just maintained it. The controller will charge if necessary to what I need. But if I'm gonna not be going camping for a long period of time, 
I might just shut off that disconnect in the front and that completely stops any load on the battery whatsoever and it allows that battery just to rest. And that's a good time to check your water levels. And don't forget when you're checking your water levels in your batteries, you wanna use distilled water. And that's available at any grocery store pretty much for like a dollar a gallon, if that sometimes. And you want your battery to be at rest. You wanna fill the water up to, you know, a 16th or an eighth inch just below the top of the where the water level is readable, not the, the hole. You don't want to fill the hole all the way up because the battery does need to properly vent and breathe. But those are things that you can do when your battery is disconnected. So hopefully, you know, if you get a chance, look in your booklets, pull out those three, take a gander at them, and, you know, play with your meter and your battery monitor, get everything set up and that gives you a better accuracy for monitoring your batteries. All right, happy camping.